Genshin Impact's Ganyu is broken. There's no other way to put it. Not in a bad way, mind you, but probably in the best way possible, especially if you're one of those lucky few who managed to snag her. On paper, she's hitting damage numbers way beyond anyone else in the game, way more than even the premium DPS unit, D-Look. Building her up and checking out her damage, we can guarantee you that the math isn't exaggerating, and her damage isn't even that hard to set up. Hordes of enemies embracing death's sweet embrace as soon as they spawn, and massive bosses who fall before they can so much as raise a finger. And all from what? Nothing but a few taps from a charged shots, which do not even take that long to build up. Ganyu is all kinds of ridiculous. If you have her, congrats by the way, there's a good chance that you're on your way to trivializing most of Genshin Impact's existing content, especially with the new Hypostasis Symphony event that's pretty challenging. It's a little amusing that Mihoyo isn't even done addressing the controversy that was Zhongli's underwhelming kit. But now, Ganyu just strolls along by with an absurdly powerful one that presents an entirely different problem for the game's balancing team. Before we get to the solution, let's talk about what makes Ganyu broken. Bow users. They're generally awkward to use in Genshin Impact. After Mihoyo gathered plenty of data to back up the suggestion that bow users are weak, <coughs> they decided to make a new hero who has lead bow skills. Enter Ganyu. Ganyu's design seems to be one that's informed by some of these core flaws. For instance, the elemental effect on the charged shot actually kicks in a tad faster compared to other bow users. When fully charged, her arrow creates an area of effect spread upon impact, even if it hits the ground or a wall. This eliminates a lot of the difficulty in getting charged shots to land. Unfortunately, Mihoyo underestimated how effective these few changes would be at making Ganyu viable as a bow character. Maybe they want to scale it up so that a new bow unit wouldn't feel outright terrible to play on a mobile device. Regardless, Ganyu players aren't missing shots, but they're also doing absurd amounts of damage in the process. On top of her improved aiming mechanics, she also has massive damage multipliers on her area of effect spread. You could aim at the ground and this would still deal more damage than anything even the next best bow user could muster. And that doesn't even take into account how she manages a critical hit rate, self buff, as well as a cryo resistance debuff on enemies with each consecutive shot. In a game where success in battle often comes through a combination of different characters and elemental reactions, Ganyu stands out as a unit that's so OP that she doesn't even need most of these systems to perform optimally. So what's the big deal, you may wonder? If Ganyu's that much of a problem, then all Mihoyo has to do is nerf her. Sadly, it's not that simple. At least not with this type of game, an F2P game. Genshin Impact is a free game that heavily relies on the loot box monetization model. These earn cosmetics only too, as players can obtain powerful weapons and characters by engaging with this system. Incidentally, Ganyu happens to be a 5-star unit, which is the rarest type of unit that can be obtained. So it goes without saying that obtaining her through the RNG infested waters that is the loot box experience can make for an expensive time. To further elaborate, if you wanted to guarantee yourself Ganyu once without any of the free premium currency, you would have to pay about US 200 on average in this game. Some players may also snipe for duplicate units, which can unlock your extra abilities up to 6 times. On the basis that you're somehow very rich and with very bad luck, you could spend upwards of, get ready for this, US 1400 for 7 copies of Ganyu to unlock her peak potential. And we gotta say, it's an incredible amount of money to spend. But make no mistake, there are people out there who have undoubtedly passed the threshold. Though some players may just want her for her looks and personality, there's no changing the fact that Ganyu's overpowered kit was already there when Mihoyo put her up for sale. And if all the money that players have already thrown at this character, Mihoyo is put in a difficult position where they cannot simply nerf Ganyu. Well, not unless they want an angry mob knocking on the door anytime soon. Just like how fans bombarded Mihoyo with negative feedback about Zhongli, nerfing Ganyu down to the baseline would likely be another recipe for disaster. When it comes to nerfing units in gacha games, developers' fear of fan backlash isn't quite unfounded. In 2019, a pretty cool stylish pinball game called World Flipper faced a conundrum after one of its win units, Philia, turned out to enable a broken team composition that would completely destroy any content in the game. 
Within 72 hours, the developer Sightail nerfed the game's win meta into the ground. Fans who had thrown everything into Philia's banner were quite upset, with many asking for refunds, sending the game low ratings, and calling out financial exploitation. Same issue happened to Grand Blue Fantasy back in 2016, in which the premium character Korwa ended up being too powerful that she required an emergency nerf from the developer Psygames. Facing a similar sort of backlash, they were forced to issue out refunds while still allowing players to keep the character. Such situations can be difficult for companies as they actively hurt their revenue streams and goodwill in the process. So, what can MiHoYo do? Though having an OP character can be fun for a while, it can hurt the enjoyability of the game in the long term. While nerfing is the simplest and most direct solution, there's that whole backlash we mentioned. So what else can they do? How about adding or changing game mechanics? When you can't solve the problem, manage it. In Fate Grand Order, the servant known as Merlin became infamous for his ability to one-shot bosses. To mitigate his effectiveness, the developer Delightworks eventually introduced Break Bars, which essentially divided a boss's health pool into smaller bars. Each HP bar must first be depleted completely before the next HP bar is activated. This meant that Merlin users could no longer rely on one-shots and would have to consider different strategies after depleting the first HP bar. MiHoYo could introduce a similar mechanic to control Ganyu's effectiveness. What if newer enemies were to gain cry resistance through various means, which could only be reduced through elemental reactions? Or how about newer environments or battle arenas that start damaging your one character if you use him or her for too long? Options like these would encourage players to stop playing Ganyu as a one-size-fit-all character but would still allow her to contribute. Being forced to switch her out on occasion would curb her DPS, as most of her damage comes from her consecutive shots. Of course, indirectly nerfing a character by manipulating the game's systems can be tricky as it would affect other characters in the process. However, MiHoYo is no stranger to this design philosophy, having also handled overpowered characters in Honkai Impact 3, via new enemies, battle modes, and rule sets. There's also buffing other characters to match. Another F2P game, Dragalia Lost, faced a problem with its meta after the introduction of Gala Cleo, a limited time character who could effectively buff, heal, debuff, and deal damage all on her own. In a game where multiplayer co-op is the appeal, this caused a huge upset in the community as Gala Cleo became the go-to character for clearing the game's more difficult boss fights. To make sure that players weren't locked out of content for simply not owning a character, Psy Games began buffing Shadow Element characters to match Gala Cleo's effectiveness. Eventually, the Shadow Element became far more powerful than any of the other elements, after which, Psy Games responded again by buffing other elements for the game's second anniversary, with enemy stats scaled up accordingly. If there's one lesson to be learned from here, it's that balancing for gacha games can apparently be quite an ordeal. Reworking the skill sets and playstyles of over a hundred characters and maybe more due to one OP unit sounds ludicrous on paper, but it's been done. Processes like these can take months to finally see fruition. But maybe touring around controversy is a reward in itself to some companies. We're not here to judge. It's one strategy that MiHoYo could take, and given Genshin Impact's financial success, they can certainly afford it. Still, if all characters are to be buffed, then enemies will also need to be revamped, so that too would be a challenge. There's also writing out the power creep. Power creep is a term that describes how developers will introduce new game elements such as abilities, characters, or items, and in doing so, slowly but surely cause older content to become obsolete. One good example is Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and how the descriptions on said cards have become more and more complicated over the years, often with effects that can manipulate the flow of a match. Whether you like it or not, power creep exists as a byproduct of developers wanting to keep games fresh and interesting over a long period of time. Writing out power creep runs on the basic principle that future content will one day catch up with Ganyu's power level. This could happen in a few months, a year, or even longer. Some gacha games such as Fire Emblem Heroes run with this philosophy, and allow powerful units to shine until they eventually reach a point in the future when they're just okay. Though older units will typically receive new progression mechanics to keep up with the power creep, the developers can simply opt to exclude Ganyu from this process. One concern over this strategy, however, is that Genshin Impact rolls out new units and bosses at a relatively slow pace compared to other games. 
essentially, power creep isn't much of a concern when your modest operandi is to release just one new gacha unit every 20 days. Mihoyo could speed up the power creep on their newer units if they wanted to, but players will no doubt take notice. That being said, unlike a lot of similar games, Genshin Impact has the privilege of being a mostly single player experience without any PvP elements. While the game does have multiplayer co-op, content is often designed around single player first before they then become adjusted for multiplayer. I guess in this sense, the developers might consider it fine for Ganyu to remain as powerful for now. After all, if the result is that some players get to clear the dailies and events 10 minutes faster, then that doesn't really hurt anyone, right? At the end of the day, should you worry about incoming nerfs as a Ganyu player? The answer is, probably not. Her decisively powerful kit represents a problem for Genshin Impact, but without any social elements such as competitive PvP, rankings, or co-op only quests to benefit from, her presence hardly detriments the people who don't have her. There are a myriad number of ways that Mihoyo can tackle the issue without resorting to a nerf. Historically, they've opted not to nerf powerful units as well, so there's no need to lose sleep over it for now. Future game content might be designed with Ganyu in mind to slowly reduce her viability, but you should expect this to happen over many months rather than overnight. And if she gets nerfed anyway, expect some chunky compensation to go along with the change, as passionate fans will more than likely refuse to take such a change sitting down. Bottom line, if you have Ganyu, then you're generally in luck. Just enjoy her for now because like a lot of things in life and in games, it won't last forever. Thanks for checking this Genshin Impact video out. If you like content like this, do subscribe and hit that notification icon to get updated on more KKP gaming goodness. We post new content every week. See you next time, and good luck on your next gacha in Teibat.